In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to talk with, uh, with the children a little bit this morning before uh, I, I give my homily. Can I ask all the kids to come forward? Just gather around up here. You guys can come over when you put your pants back. Come on up, guys. You can sit on the step or on the floor, whatever's best. Why don't you sit right here? Okay, good place. All right. Grab a seat, guys. All right, we're going to do uh, a couple special things today. And if you look at this stole that I'm wearing, take a good look at it. This was made by someone, and on it are all these different stories from the Bible. I'm going to show you one here. Take a look at this one right here. What does this one look like people were doing? What are they doing? They're like laying out palms. That's the story of Palm Sunday. See everybody with their green palms? And they're waving them. So that's today, and that's why we had a parade and everybody came in. And then I want to show you over here. I'm going to show you another one. What's going on on this story? It looks like somebody's getting baptized, isn't it? And here's a lake, and here's a lot of people, and here's somebody, and he's taking somebody's head and putting it under water. Who do you think that is that's being baptized? Do we know? Who? It's Jesus being baptized. That's his cousin John. And he's baptizing them. And as you can see, they used to do it in a river. Some people still do it in rivers. You go out, you get out there, off go about your waist, and you go under water and come back up, and that's the way they do it. We don't do it like that. We do it a little differently, and you'll see in a couple minutes. But we're going to baptize Casey and Cole today, but not in a river. So I want to tell you a little bit about baptism. Did you ever get your hands dirty? And what do you do when you get them dirty? How do you wash them? What do you do? What do you use? You soak the water. Use water. Water cleans things. <laughs> and so that's why we use water when we baptize, because it cleans us. From our sins, and our sins are the things that we do that aren't exactly right. Do you ever do things that are wrong? Do you ever get mad at somebody? Do you ever hit a brother or a sister? I hope not, but sometimes people do that. <laughs> sometimes they say mean things. Those are the things that make us dirty, but the water for baptism washes all of that off. And the other thing that baptism does is it's a way of saying that we're following Jesus. Have some of you guys been baptized? I bet you have. Do you remember? No, no, no. Sometimes you're some were too small, huh? You guys are going to remember it, though, Casey and Cole. You're going to remember it. You follow Jesus, and it means Jesus is going to be your friend now. And when you have a friend, you talk to your friends, don't you? You talk to your friends. And so you want to talk to Jesus because he's your friend. So whether it's when you get up in the morning or you go to bed at night, it's a time to talk with them and tell them what's happening. Tell them thank you for things that went well. Tell them thanks for your parents. Tell them thanks for your friends. Thanks for all the things you have. But also tell them anything that worries you. I have a big test at school. Um, I have a lot of work to do. My parents want me to clean up my room. I don't know if I can do it. You can talk to, your, to Jesus because you talk to him as your friend. Okay? And once you're baptized, he's your friend. And you're his friend. All right, when we baptize a little bit later, I'm going to ask you guys to come up and get a close seat, okay? So if you're ready to come on back up, and I'll call you at the right time. Okay, take your seats. Thanks, guys. And so we started today with a parade. And we love parades, don't we? And it was a parade that remembers the procession of Jesus into Jerusalem. It seems to be cross-cultural. Everybody loves parades. Just a month ago, we celebrated uh, St. Patrick's Day, and we had this huge parade downtown, didn't we? By people who were celebrating a saint from 1,500 years ago. These were people who weren't even Irish. They weren't even Christians. They may not even know who St. Patrick was, but they came to see the parade. 
Rich and old, rich and poor, old and young, we all like parades. We're gathered today not in thousands or we're not in the streets, but we do come to celebrate, to celebrate with Casey and Cole, who are soon to be baptized and made children of God and welcomed into his church. We are pleased that they are part of our lives here at St. Thomas. They're full of character, wonderful children with great God-given potential, and it's a blessing anytime we welcome new people into our church. They're part of, obviously, Ken and Karma's family, but now they're also part of this wider church family. It's a whole congregation of people who will commit today, all of us, to supporting them in their Christian life, and we take it seriously. We're celebrating their belonging to Christ. We're celebrating with him, them the hope that Jesus brings to us this day. And Palm Sunday is a day about hope. The hope that Jesus brought to those people that were lining the streets that day 2,000 years ago as he rode in on that donkey. They welcomed him in and they were riding a crest of hope and euphoria. They were tremendously excited. They had great expectations for what was to happen. They heard of his teachings. They heard of his healing. They saw how he had transformed the lives of people and the people's hopes for a national savior. And that's what they were looking for, a national savior. It seemed like it was on the brink of fulfillment. It was about to happen. Here he comes from the countryside riding into the city and they were ready to welcome in their king. It was Passover time. It was the time of remembering freedom from bondage when they were slaves in Egypt and they were released. That's what Passover remembers and that's what they were celebrating that day. The long-awaited hope of freedom was at last going to come true for them. And so Jesus is welcomed because something new and different was about to happen. They spread their garments, we're told, on the road. Think of what that meant. Here are handmade garments with expensive cloth, some of it woven by the people themselves to create these garments. Yet they took them and they laid them on the dusty, dirty, rocky streets of the town. That's not something you do for anybody. That's something you do for royalty. They didn't go and cut off leafy branches of palm just because it was something they wanted to do that would make them feel happy. That's what you do when a king is coming. They were remembering quite well the story from 200 years earlier. In those days, Jerusalem had been taken over by Syria. A Syrian king had taken over the city. They had destroyed parts of the temple. They defiled the temple. And they basically put the Jewish people under oppression. But then comes this Jewish leader. His name is Maccabeus, Judas Maccabeus. And he came and he gathered a, an army of citizens and they forced the Syrians out. And when Judas Maccabeus came back to rebuild the temple and to cleanse it and to give Jerusalem back to the Jews, they waved palms as he came into town. A new king who brings us freedom. And they're remembering that and saying, it's happening again. Here comes the next great king for us. The disciples believed that this was the true and rightful king. It was the moment of his royal reception. And they sang Hosanna. We sing it today. It's not a word we use in English. It's a Hebrew word. It's a word that means this praise just bursting out. Hosanna was the highest, most praiseworthy word you could say. And God was coming to save his people, and they were so excited. He's the one who's coming to make the Passover real. And then what next? The story ends with an anticlimax, doesn't it? We go from this parade, this great celebration, and we're told Jesus went into the temple. They don't say what he did there. He went in, he came out. And he went two miles out of town to a little village called Bethany. And he stayed there with friends. 
Mary, Martha, Lazarus. And then there's a pause. Palm Sunday is this great, very upbeat day. Easter even more so, a week from now. But what lies between? We stand on the threshold of Holy Week, a week of betrayal and arrests and crucifixion. The man who is welcomed as king will soon be humiliated and destroyed. The same people today shouting Hosanna in just a few days will be the same ones shouting crucify him. How fickle we human beings are, how quickly we change our allegiances. We welcome Jesus today into the totality of our lives and our experiences. We welcome him him into our hopes, our fears, our anxieties, into the world with all of its promise and into the world with all of its brokenness. We welcome him and we pray he will transform us and this world. The crowd sensed something deep and life-changing was happening as Jesus rode in that day. They could not know the danger into which he was riding and that the work he would do would end and be completed on a cross. They could have never imagined that. A place, though, where his love for the world would change everything. But we can know that. We can know that his love for the world indeed changes everything. And as we pray today for Casey and Cole in their baptisms, and we celebrate the love of Christ that will be and is alive in them, we pray for his love to change us, to change the hearts, the hard places in our hearts, yours and mine, and in the world, the entire world, because indeed that was his mission as he rode into town that day. Amen.